government has determined that health is a key priority for the country um, de developing our people and um, we have been pursuing the Health Sciences Initiative, looking at training and education, um, making sure that we have the human resource capacity, um, putting infrastructure and systems in place, and also delivering quality care to our citizens. What, what's really exciting about this is, you know, in, in a very short period of time, and we've been working since 2005, but this is still a short period of time in terms of programs to this scale. We have three programs that are in different levels of implementation, and they're all exciting in their own ways. The first program that's exciting is the, the Masters of Health program that's being done with UTT. And the reason why that's most exciting is because, in my opinion, that's the biggest need in the country. Uh, this country needs well-trained, capable health administrators, health leaders who are going to transform the health system. Johns Hopkins, UTT, the medical community, they're not going to transform it. The leaders that are being developed in this initiative and through this initiative are going to be the people who change healthcare in Trinidad. The fundamental objective is to try to improve the management of healthcare services, primarily in the public sector. And the only way we can develop health and the health sector is not by injecting more funds in terms of medication, more hospitals. I think it's managing what we have more effectively. It's a three-year program. It's an executive style program. That means everybody is working full-time. We have clinical persons, medical doctors, nurses, psychologists, pharmacists, and we have on the other side management administrative personnel who have no clinical background. They see the strengths in each other and what they have to gain from each other, so that's, that's very exciting. I mean, we all come from different backgrounds, we all have different positions in healthcare, both private and public, and each person each person would agree that there is a large amount of relevance to what they do right now. It's all coming together. They're able to see the relevance to the academic knowledge because our focus is not just the principles from whatever areas they're studying the courses, but the principles must transition to health and issues in the health sector, health system, and Trinidad and Tobago and the region. This is a very important way that we can reach out and extend the benefits, you know, the knowledge base of Hopkins to other parts of the world. Another thing that's exciting and unique is what we're trying to do in cardiology and what we're doing and achieving in cardiology. It's actually very unique for us and it's a program that brings the cardiologists and the teachers at Hopkins, both in terms of nursing and technologists, to Trinidad. We're working both with the private sector and the public sector to develop training programs, to train physicians and nurses, to deliver services that are not available. As everybody's well aware, heart disease is a, is a major, major problem in Trinidad and Tobago. For a population this size, it probably should have between 80 and 100 cardiologists uh, serving the population. And in the public sector, uh, they actually have one cardiologist. Uh, in the private sector, uh, maybe a half a dozen. And on a daily basis, we see patients that uh, badly need even life-saving procedures and they're not, a, not available. There's a tremendous shortage of cardiologists, of trained cardiologists, people who have the expertise. With the John Hopkins program and um, the initiative in cardiology, I think in fact what we hope to do is to elevate the, the services, elevate the standard of cardiology to such a high level to reach first world. Our mission down here is to bring cardiology faculty 48 weeks a year for a four-year period of time. So already, I have noted that in the training, while John Hopkins has been here, the technicians have learned a great deal about how to optimize their images and how to get the best information about the various pathologies. At this point in time, I'm actually delighted over the progress that's been made. This lab we're in uh, actually when we first came down here, it was actually nothing but in uh, boxes. There was no operating lab here at all. In September uh, was the first uh, angioplasties that had been done in the, in the public sector uh, in six or eight years. We'll be able to deliver a first world service to any individual who requires that particular speciality. And I, I actually anticipate that could happen. That's what excites me. One of the greatest opportunities that we have is in our program in diabetes. And it really is, is trying to work in a unique way. It, 
It's trying to work in partnership with the, the physicians and the nurses in the community health centers. People with diabetes have challenges. They have medical complications. The highest cost of care comes to those who have existing diabetes. And, and what this program really is trying to do is integrate those programs, provide access to people with diabetes to the specialist to try and really create an impact for those who have diabetes and those who potentially will in the future. That diabetes is it's a major problem here in Trinidad. Um, the prevalence is somewhere between 15 to 20 percent of the population. That's compared to the US, which is about 7 to 8 percent, and the UK, probably about 3 percent. So we have a massive problem. And um, one of the things that we are struggling with is manpower. We have tremendous respect for the primary care doctors there who have to take care of all the illnesses and all the chronic diseases and the in infectious diseases and so on. The clinics are um, heavily booked. Um, we may have only five to seven minutes per patient. And to treat diabetes effectively, you need to have a screening program to pick up complications of diabetes at an early stage. So the Johns Hopkins initiative will allow us to develop a program to screen for complications, pick these up at an early stage and therefore then act on it. Now that's going to be a major improvement. I'm excited because it really is the opportunity to affect the health care of a nation. It's a, it's a small nation, a nation that's very burdened by diabetes. Their problem is huge, their expenses are huge in taking care of people with diabetes, and we think we can help. I think one of the things I have learned uh, from working with the uh, Hopkins group is that there's uh, expertise in learning to groom people into a collective force. And I'd like to believe that comes from its uh, long history of, uh, of, of working in things educational and working towards a purpose that is larger uh, than the individual and of greater longevity than, than any individual. So one, one takes a pride or seems to in being a thread in a complex fabric.